We are back, folks, for another edition of the Michigan Recruiting Insider Podcast. You know how we do it, the latest and the greatest in Michigan recruiting. We bring it to you here from the best site in the land when it comes to accurate Michigan intel and information on football, uh, basketball, and recruiting. By the way, Bryce and I were out at Michigan's team camp yesterday and saw a few of the top prospects in the state, so be on the lookout for details on that. We talked to uh, Trey McKinney, uh, top target for Michigan and several other schools. Darius Acuff, who has really, really blown up, and I think he is considered by some people to be the top prospect in the state, regardless of class. So he was there. Young John Sanderson, uh, he looked good. He was there, right? So it was a nice, uh, nice camp. We'll be bringing you updates on all of those guys. But today, we are going to dedicate the entire podcast to football recruiting like we typically do. Joining me, the best crew in the land, from the best site in the land when it comes to Michigan recruiting. Uh, starting off first with Steve Lorenz. Steve, how are you? Good, guys. Real good. And, of course, Mr. Bryce Marich, how are you? I'm solid. I got a lot. We got a lot to unpack. So Yeah, a whole, whole lot. You are absolutely right to unpack, some of which kind of, Rub fans the wrong way, but if you just stay with us over on the MichiganInsider.com, you get calmed down. At least I hope you do by following us. We give you insight and perspective. And right now, 50% off deal going on over at the Michigan Insider, MichiganInsider.com. It's also available to monthly subscribers for upgrades. So if you've been a monthly subscriber all this time, haven't taken the plunge to become an annual, which is great bang for your buck, now is your opportunity to take advantage. So we've been looking out for you. You've been talking to the folks 24-7. Hey, take care of the monthlies. This is your opportunity to become an annual. But, guys, Devin Baxter, or Maryland, as, as Ship kept calling him. He said, yeah, Maryland is loving it here. Maryland is loving it here. He loved it enough to commit, Steve. So what do you make of Devin Baxter's commitment to, to the University of Michigan? <clears throat> Another guy that's probably going to be better than what his rating currently is. Uh, I hate to be a broken record or hate to sound like we're always vouching for Michigan's takes, but 6'6", 230, basketball. Like, he checks off all the boxes of guys that Michigan has turned into really productive players at the edge position. Um, he's a guy going into last weekend, felt like Michigan was in control if they wanted to be. I think this was a situation where um, I know for some members, I believe some members, it was the first time he's met some of the staff members in person. So there's that part of it, you know, and that's really the, a lot of times can be one of the most important parts of an unofficial or official is just literally meeting and getting to know the people that uh, are recruiting you. And uh, Michigan fell in love, I, I believe, made us made a strong, strong push and uh, we're able to get him to shut down his recruitment. So very high ceiling guy. Uh, Another guy, it was interesting, the other thing I was told about him was kind of fascinating. He's a guy who who is an extremely, extremely hard, hard worker, but is very quiet about the work he puts in. I believe there are a lot of unreported offers on his profile because he doesn't post all of them. Uh, I mean, maybe we can try to get a hold of those. I think it's not really that important at this point. But, uh, but either way, a very quiet, hardworking working knows the grindstone type kid uh, at a premium position. So really nice addition for Michigan. This was, you know, I think we've talked about Michigan wanting to take four or five guys there. I was asked if I could choose uh, the four or five to take Baxter was one of them, even though I believe he's the lowest ranked of the guys that they're, that they've really seriously been pursuing. So, uh, but yeah, I can't say enough about this one. I think, I think Michigan believes that he has the potential to be a monster uh, on the edge for them. Yeah, Steve. So, you know, the thing with Devin Baxter, he was one of the guys that Gene Hankerson, he went to the Under Armour camp in Baltimore. Of course, he talked about the guys that we we're going to talk about a little bit later that came off the board for Michigan, guys like Aaron Childs, guys like Darian Mayo, who's another edge. But this was another kid who he came back saying, hey, his athletic profile is just different. Like you said, Steve. 6'6", 230, but can really run. Like, if you look at some of the clips Gene posted, the guy has excellent burst, really, really good speed. And he sort of reminds me a little bit of a – he's a longer version of what I remember thinking about Josh Uche when I saw him 
in high school. Same kind of deal where he was like this slender guy, but like was really, really fast in a straight line, had great get off. He just needed to get bigger. Well, this kid is his athletic profile as far as speed and quickness is the same, except in the 6'6 frame. And his ranking is kind of similar to Josh Uche's, right? So, you know, can Michigan strike lightning twice? Uh, and build this guy up the way that they were able to build Josh Uche up. I mean, you get a guy like Ben Herbert a uh, lump of clay like this, Bryce, and you feel pretty optimistic about your chances of doing just that. Yeah, I watched the same clips that Gene posted. I mean, I was told when he came up on his uh, official this past weekend, he was 6'6", 240. So he's even bigger than the 230, and he moves extremely well. I mean, he, you could tell he doesn't lumber at that size. Like Steve said, he was a basketball player, and he's actually their, if you look at it, their first true, like, edge prospect in this class. Because, I mean, you got Manuel Beagle, probably going to be inside. Inside guy. Ted Hammond. You got, you know, um, Owen Wafel, and you got Gerard Smith. So these are guys that are likely probably going to slide inside, but I see Devin Baxter more kind of fitting the Mike Morse kind of, strong side right there but i was told he could go either side honestly i mean he's that he's got that um position flexibility he can move around and bottom line you can't teach 6'6 240 coming out of high school yeah this dude athleticism and his wingspan i heard is incredible as well yeah i don't know that mike morris ever ran like this dude (laughs) like you know yeah it'd be it'd be more like a jabo when you talk about his you know this dude's frame and and speed and and burst he he's more like a guy that you line up on on that side and frankly you feel real comfortable with him if you're talking about doing some of the stand-up stuff they have mike morris do then yeah i mean you could even see this is the kind of guy that you kind of let his body dictate you feel like they'll always bring him off the edge but man what if his athletic profile is that of a of a linebacker i don't think it will be Uh, But I just think he's that athletic where, you know, if his body weren't able to put on some weight. Because someone says, well, how do you know a guy's going to be able to put on all that weight? I guess technically you don't. You feel like they will be with with Ben Herbert. I mean, I do think it's, at least for me, kind of a foregone conclusion. But for the sake of argument, if it can't happen, this this kid is so athletic that I think he could very well be a linebacker and could still thrive at the next level. But edge through and through. Which brings us to the broader discussion of the edge position, fellas. We have talked about it on a lot of podcasts. People, they were asking the question about how many Michigan would take when it looked like 20 of them wanted to come, right? Well, now we know Darian Mayo canceled his Michigan visit. Aaron Childs, who was a linebacker recruit and linebacker target, but you guys, I'm sure you were talking to a lot of the same scouts and people that I was talking to were saying, hey, they could see him being an edge down the line, I think Michigan was kind of looking at him as a guy with ha- having some positional versatility. Well, you got those two guys off the board. Let, let's start with that, with those two guys coming off the board. First with Darian Mayo, who canceled his visit. Uh, so today we're recording on Thursday. He canceled his visit on Wednesday. I took that as a sign, guys, that he's on his way to Clemson. Now, what did you guys think about that? That was my first thought, right? I mean, isn't I think Clemson is a uh... – don't visit other schools. Yeah. Deal. I I, yeah. I think they're probably trying to put the squeeze on him, keep him from going to Michigan. Basically, you know, you have the we have another guy. Could be like we have another guy ready mm-hmm. in the wings to commit, but we like you more if you want to get on board first. You know, it feels like one of those types of deals. Uh, definitely a loss for Michigan mm-hmm. for sure, especially because it felt like Michigan was running one or two mm-hmm. for quite a while in this one. I mean, it was pretty much what Clemson, Ohio state, Michigan, it felt like for a decent amount of time. I'm trying to think of who else was even involved. Uh, but yeah, a guy and, and a guy, I think we'd all argue was probably at the very top of their edge board too, mm-hmm. at least of the guys they're still recruiting and have a chance and had a chance with. So yeah, I can't really, uh, sugarcoat that one. Definitely a loss for the staff. Um, it is another position, though, where they've produced guys, right? So the, there are positions where it's it can stink a little bit more, I think, losing out on your top target than edge. But either way, you're talking with him. What's he, 6'8"? 6'8", 6'7", like mm-hmm. 245. Like, I mean, he's got – he's like 
a big, a little bit of a bigger version than Devin Baxter, right? So, uh, you know, ceiling, an amazing ceiling at the position. So definitely a loss for Michigan, but one I think we think they can overcome through other additions. Yeah, it's uh, I agree, definitely a loss. But when you look at where where things rest with the rest of the board, so Elias Rudolph. I think we all have crystal balls in for Elias Rudolph. Uh, he canceled his Ohio State visit. I know they'll t- they tell you that, oh, they they canceled the visit on him. Very convenient, wouldn't you say? When it starts looking like he is leaning heavily to Michigan. And we laid out. This is another head-to-head. You lose this if you're Ohio State. You've essentially lost another in-state battle, right? This is an Ohio guy. He's only been in in Florida for a half a year. Right, and there's strong rumblings that he's going to be back in Ohio as a senior. Yeah, they don't want another L on the record. That's how I took it, Bryce. I don't know how you took it. Yeah, I'm, that's kind of how I took it, too. I mean, here's the thing. I I know they really like him. That was a prospect they had been scouting and recruiting for several months. And he's right in their backyard, you know. I mean, we, we actually talked about this a little before we got on the podcast of just how the perception of, of – Ohio recurring has changed, mm-hmm. especially Ohio State and how they view guys that an Aaron Scott, you know, uh, Bryce West, those used to be layups for Ohio State. Those were just givens because, I mean, Aaron Scott, his family's, I mean, they bleed, you know, scarlet and gray. And Bryce West comes from, I don't know if a stronger pipeline school, if I've ever seen one to a college program than Glenville, which has sent guys to Michigan. But for the most part, it's Ohio State. And, yeah, I, that that would be a loss for sure, I think, for them. But they're going to say, you know, they got they got a bunch of other top, highly ranked guys. But I think Michigan's counterargument to that would be like, all right, look what we've done with our edge rushers. Uh-huh. And you look at, you know, Elias Rudolph, six foot four, 205 pounds. Perfect for a guy like Ben Herbert. I think he would love to work with those type of kids, especially, you know, yeah. maybe not as much as finished products, but kids that he can sculpt and mold and work with in the weight room for a year or two and let them blossom like Ojabo and like some of these other guys, even not even edge rushers. I mean, look at a guy like DJ Turner, you know, and what he helped him become a second round overall pick. So yeah, that, that would be a huge land. And it, Edge recruiting at this point is now, I don't even think it's much of a numbers game, but more of who's going to jump in the mix Mm -hmm. and kind of how they factor in Mm -hmm. at this point. That's how I'm looking at it. Yeah, I think you raise a great point, though, because we just talked about it with Devin Baxter. These are these are guys you if you have if you believe in your development, your your strength and conditioning program, these guys, these are guys who could be. Big time stars like Ajabo was. Now, I mean, are you always going to hit? No, but these they have the requisite skill set when it comes to speed, length, explosiveness. That if you can just pack on some muscle, you can have something really special. Uh, Thirteen sack guy Devin Baxter, twenty sack guy um, Elias Rudolph. Uh, so they showed you they can get off the get around the edge. Now just give them some weight, some muscle, uh, so they can hold up its point of attack. Dominic Nichols, Steve, that's another one that Michigan is is trending up for. And we've been talking about him for a while, so that's another edge that they remain in good shape with. Yep, another guy in that mix of, like, the same the, the group of, like, five or six guys that we've been talking about as far as, you know, who they really have a shot with at edge, who they really like um, up for his official last weekend or was he up two weekends ago? Uh, I think that was uh, – He's been up in the last couple yeah. weeks. Right, he's been up in the last couple weekends. Either way, Michigan, I think, felt good going into the visit. I think they felt good coming out of the visit. There were some rumblings that Clemson was maybe trying to make a run here a little bit too, and, and maybe trying to push him to come up to campus. He did cancel his official to Virginia Tech this weekend, though, uh, which got to be a good sign if you're Michigan. Uh, could be one I think that ends sometime in the not too distant future. Uh, you know, especially if Clemson, if if Mayo verbals to Clemson uh, that probably shuts the door mm-hmm. on on any pursuit Clemson was going to make there anyway and, and to be honest I, I'm not sure if 
in this one individually, if, if a Clemson pursuit would really change the trajectory right. necessarily. It's felt like Michigan is in good shape and has been in good shape in this one for, a long for quite time. a while. But yeah, another DMV area guy, uh, small town in Maryland. I can't even remember the name of it, but but a guy, yeah, the, another guy who I believe plays basketball, 6'5", 245. Uh, they loved him. He, he came up for an unofficial earlier in the spring, I want to say, and again, much like Baxter was a guy I think they knew that they were really going to like, but once you got to get a guy up to campus, get that whole feel going there, and, and they loved him. And uh, like I said, I think Michigan's been in control there for a few months probably at this point. Right, and so then that leaves the, the question about guys who maybe they were trending up in a significant way for at some point, and then you kind of wonder, well, things are kind of quiet now. What's going on? Jacob Smith fits that mold, his brother uh, uh, Jared in the in the class already, and then Brian Robinson, who is clearly he's moving on a, at his own pace, on his own timeline. Their visits popping up that weren't even on the list, at least it, the public list. Like he probably had a a private list uh, that we knew it was going to be Michigan, it was going to be Kentucky, it was going to be Penn State, but since then. Guys, he's popped up in Maryland, and Steve, I think you said he was at Illinois as well? Yeah, he camped, like, performed at Illinois yeah. yesterday. Uh, and then, yeah, was at Maryland, I think, and was there not too long ago before. I, I believe he returned for an official after taking an unofficial there. Uh, yeah, I, I don't know. Yeah, yeah, so, I, look, he, I, I think he is clearly – um, I think he's accumulated enough information on the schools that have been there for the duration. I really think these extra visits are true. This is my opinion. Him enjoying the process. You know, it feels like if, if Michigan adds, we got him adding two more edges. Um, if if they add three more with a Jacob Smith, man, that spot gets it, it gets really really tight. If if those three commit before. Brian, this is where I think timing is everything. You know, I, I think if he comes in uh, before one or two of those guys, you know, maybe they stretch it a little farther uh, because you do have some positional versatility. Guys who might be at a play standing up, guys who might kick inside. I mean, it could, you can move some different guys around. But the longer you go, the more you start looking at other positions, maybe grabbing an extra spot, maybe offensive line for instance, comes in and grabs that extra spot, which we will talk about coming up. So it, it becomes not just a question of how many guys can you fit in, in you know, in your out of your edge bucket at different spots on the defensive side of the ball. It becomes, okay, are you going to use what is an extra spot essentially at another position altogether? It could be offensive line. It could be whatever. It could be receiver. Who knows? Uh, the longer you go, you run the risk of that. And I, I think that's kind of where things are with Brian Robinson right now. So still obviously on the board, still looking very hard at Michigan. Uh, still, I think if he were to call up today and say, I, I want to come, I think the spot's there. But the longer it goes, the more tenuous that, that becomes, fellas. I, I wonder what you think about that. I don't know. I'm I'm in the same boat. And, I, you know, I think right now, I think Dominic Nichols, correct me if I'm wrong, He's supposed to decide, I think, next month. I know for sure. Elias Rudolph is definitely deciding next month. Jacob Smith, he's coming up um, this upcoming weekend, actually, with his brother, who's taking an official visit mm -hmm. compared to earlier in the month. So he could pop any time as well. It's just one of those things where, you know, you, you keep taking those visits because you're enjoying the process. But, it, you know, the other thing, too, and knowing – his dad and knowing him and how his family operates, they know what's going on uh -huh. in Michigan recruiting. Like they're they're keeping a close eye on who's committing, who's not committing, who's close to committing. And I think they see that. But at the same point, it, I don't want to say it's first come, first serve, but it's starting to get that vibe yeah. of where it's just like, you know, we're gonna take who we get. Mm -hmm. And at that point, if there's not room, there's not room. Right. And right. I think I'm not saying the writing's on the wall, but it's also becoming more and more apparent of how things are trending right. in a certain direction. Because what if you decide you want to push push it to seven offensive linemen? That that spot would have to come to, come from that's, somewhere. 
But here's the thing, and I know we're going to talk about this. What about linebacker? Right. Because now, that's where that extra number could come from. Yeah, yeah. And so Aaron Childs, let's just uh, roll right into that. Uh, as significant a loss as Darian Mayo was, I, I think because of where Michigan was with Childs. Like, Aaron Childs is ready to commit on his visit. Right, we we you heard that we actually played that clip on the show on the podcast here. Who stopped him again? Was it? It was his dad. It was his dad who stopped him and kind of said, "Let's let's wait, let's see, let's not make a hasty decision. Let's look around first. They looked around. He wound up really liking it at Florida, and Florida has had a heck of a week. I mean, they're they're reeling in a bunch of prospects. Um, you know, I it's Florida number one. Uh, even though they have fallen on hard times, relatively speaking, uh, it's still Florida, it's still the SEC. Uh, and we know they have a mean, and I, Jaden Rashada, uh, they didn't actually follow through on the, what was it, the $13 million, but that it was even on the table. And there was a contract that said that he was going to get that much. Tells you that they operate in a different NIL lane. You'd be naive not to throw that uh, as a big factor in here as well. You put all that together, and it's a recipe for the kind of week they just had, Steve, which included grabbing Aaron Childs, who had heard they were they were making some noise for, they were trending up with, but I didn't talk to anyone who expected for him to actually commit on the visit. Uh, yeah, they were doing well, but I think the expectation always was he was at least going to get to Michigan on a visit, and whatever happens at Florida, they'd be able to counter it. They didn't get that chance. Yeah, I was trying to enjoy my cousin's 40th birthday on Saturday, right? It was Saturday night when he committed and I had to like reopen. I had to like reread it when I saw that he had committed to, uh, to Florida. Cause it was like, uh, it sounded like it happened really fast. I know, I think Blake Alderman, our Florida insider, uh, it sounded like things happened pretty quickly while on campus for the visit. You know, I think Wolfong put in a crystal ball. Uh, so then crystal, but a few more came in and it was like, Oh, <laughs> it was so, it was so quick. I didn't even get time to switch. I didn't even get time to switch mine. You know, yeah. It was like, damn it, we were all we were all 100 percent until until that one. I think we're all we're all one off, and it's the same one. So yeah, uh, yeah, no, I mean, I agree, Sam. I think the big yeah biggest thing is because it just he was a guy we had pretty much penciled in as a part of the class, right? It was it wasn't the question was he liked Hilo? Partridge had to kind of come in and, and rebuild that bridge. He was able to do that very easily. It felt like Michigan was well in control, and yeah, even if he had had a great visit at Florida. It felt like they, they, they had a way more to overcome than just a good visit uh, to overtake where Michigan was, but uh, apparently not. And uh, so, yeah, Michigan, we'll talk about, yeah, we're talking about their linebacker situation here. Uh, they're, it, it's not, they're not in a bad situation by any means at all. So, uh, but still, top 100-ish type kid, huge pipeline, a potential pipeline type program and one of the most talent-rich areas in the country and a guy that you thought you had and you wake up on Sunday morning and that's all gone is, is kind of a tough pill to swallow for, I would assume for Partridge and the defensive staff. So yeah. And, and don't know if they, maybe they'll, maybe they'll try to keep recruiting him. I mean, it feels like his social media stuff has been very pro pro Florida anti-Michigan <laughs> uh, lately. I saw that. I don't know if you guys saw that thing and that he was going back and forth with a couple of Michigan's commits. Uh, so yeah, we'll see, but, uh, yeah, no, I mean, it's always weird when you lose, when you, you randomly lose a guy, you know, who, like I said, we all had crystal balls in for yeah. and had basically were expecting him to commit to Michigan next weekend right? or this th AKA this weekend when he was on campus for his official. Well, that's how they had set it up that they were going to go on a visit to Michigan was going to be the last one. Right. And you know, that's when it was going to be official and you know, that's the plan until it's not. Uh, and clearly they saw something in Florida that blew their minds. Um, jolting uh, without question. It was uh, stunning in how quickly it, it happened. But, you know, I just didn't sense much panic. Now, so what happens in the aftermath, Steve? I think you captured accurately that, you know, the all staff, this was an all hands. There are certain recruits where multiple staff members are all over them, right? You know, sometimes, most often, it's like the position coach and, you know, you know, 
maybe the the area recruiter. Those are the primary. But other guys, you got multiple staff members in contact with them all the time. Aaron Childs is one of those guys, right, where you have multiple staff members all over them. Those days are over. Steve, I, you, you came on the board right after. It's like Michigan's done. The all-staff recruiting effort is over. They are not going to put that kind of attention into recruiting him 100%. I do think that there will be a coach or two, probably just one, that will keep the iron in the fire uh, with him and with good counsel because, you know, they're essentially out with the good counsel guys right now because um, at one time it was – Think about it. It was Darian Mayo. It was Aaron Childs. It was Elijah Moore. They were, you know, kind of tracking all those guys really hard. Now, all of those guys either have already said they're going elsewhere or, or headed elsewhere. And I think Michigan just going to keep the iron in the fire just to see. Uh, and if something happens, something happens. But not worth really keeping track of as like an ongoing pursuit because they ain't just not going to put that kind of energy in it anymore. But here's the thing, Bryce. You look at it, and this is not this is not trying to sugarcoat because we just Steve and I just said this is a loss, not mincing words there. But man, they're in good shape at the linebacker position. I mean, it's not like this. This doesn't kill. It hurts from the standpoint that you were up there with a top hundred guy, but the guys that they have on the board and the guys that you know a guy that they're slated to add to the board that looks like. If, if their linebacker class winds up being Cole Sullivan, Mason Curtis, Jaden Smith, and Jeremiah Beasley, that is a physical, long, athletic linebacker. All four of those linebackers will hit you and can run. And some of them are 6'4". Man, you, I think that's what Chris Partridge wanted coming in the door. Four linebackers, everyone that he gets can absolutely run. That would be the case if that winds up being his linebacker class. Absolutely. And I, you know, let's start off with like Jaden Smith. So that's a guy that Chris Partridge basically said, labeled, that's my guy. Like, that's a guy I want coming in. I evaluated him. I've scouted him. This is the type of guy I wanted coming in. And he's never really played middle linebacker, mm-hmm. but that's where they see him playing. But again, Sam, you talked about that skill set and the length and the speed and the size. That stuff that I think he wants to elevate that room, that linebacker room, and kind of take it up to another level in those regards. And he sees that with him. He sees that with Cole Sullivan. I think he sees that with Jeremiah Beasley, who I think we all still kind of predict him landing at Michigan eventually. I know Missouri's in the mix still, Michigan State, a couple other schools. And then I think the guy that does everyone forgets about is Mason Curry. Right. He was the first to come in the class. And he's a top 247 prospect. He got hurt. You know, he, he didn't finish this whole year. So he's been recovering from that. He's still kind of, you know, bulking up as well. And he, on top of all that, he played safety. He played free safety. So you talk about a guy that can move. This guy is incredible. You know, he can move. He can play multiple positions. He's very smart. He plays in a, you know, conference that, again, Brentwood Academy. He plays some strong competition out there in Tennessee. So I really like his game. And overall... It is a loss when you look at Aaron Childs, but it's, you can, you know, the blow isn't as bad when you have all these guys, hopefully in the fold, especially if you add Jeremiah Beasley, Mm -hmm. who, if I'm not mistaken, that was the guy that Chris Partridge, the first guy he got a hold of. It was. Once he got to campus was like, you're my number one guy. Let's get to work. Let's make this recruitment happen. I think, personally, this is just my opinion, but I think Beasley would have been a bigger loss. If they lost Beasley over Childs, if you could tell him or ask Michigan, you can only pick one, who would you take? I think they would take Beasley over Childs, and that's just my opinion. No, I think I agree with that. Steve, you agree with that? It's a fact. (laughs) I agree with that. Right, Yeah. I agree with that, man. Yeah. And, that, and hey, look, I know some people will look at that and say that's that's revisionist. You know, it's no. sugarcoated. It's, it's not. We've been saying that on the board for a while, Sam. Yeah. I know our our users would vouch for us. That's been a that's been a talking point on the message board for a while. Uh, again, not to downplay the loss, you know, right. here for, with Childs, but uh, 
I think Beasley's been their number one guy yeah. for a few months at least. Now. Yeah, he can run. He will hit you. He is set to announce his decision on the 29th. I was checking on it. We had Allen on a live episode last week, and he was talking that Missouri, not to disrespect Missouri, Mizzou, from all reports, has a mean NIL game. But uh, And Michigan State, you know, definitely made their run at Jeremiah Beasley as well. But coming off of that visit, and I was checking on my crystal ball, checking with other guys who were on the visit, and they are like, look, man, it's going to be tough to beat Michigan in this race. Very tough. I won't say him. Never say impossible. Never say never. But it's going to be a serious uphill battle, especially with all the resources Michigan has devoted and all the guys they have in the class that are working them. Right? I mean, none bigger than Jacob Oden, who I know you talked to. That's his little league teammate and his boy. I think he really identifies with Clink. He's really connected with Partridge. Uh, you know, has uh, has grown a connection with, with Jim Harbaugh as well. Yeah, and Even if he wasn't a guy who – just on the merits of, of talent, Partridge looked at and said, I want him as my number one guy. The fact that he's in state elevates him as well. That, that just elevates, magnifies his importance. So that's absolutely huge. But we need to get to a break. When we come back on the other side, I've been teasing this interview with Sam Griner, Jaden Smith's coach, because this dude's athleticism is off the charts. And as I said when I was relaying the conversation with Sam before, he said he's had 15 NFL guys. You'll hear him talk about it. He's had 15 NFL guys, and he's saying this kid could be the best kid he's had. The issue, I think one of the reasons why he's downgraded, he's 198 pounds right now, somewhere along those lines. But I talked to Jordan Ship <laughs> about him, who played in the 7-on-7 seven seven that West Charlotte participated in before he came up, and he was wild by this dude's athleticism. But I'll tell you about that conversation after we hear from Sam Griner on the other side here on the Michigan Recruiting Insider. No time, no talk to, man. How you doing? You got yourself one now. I'm telling you, you don't even have a clue. I'm telling you, man. <laughs> what, do you, what kind of – you guys – I forgot. You got some weird Android. This just sounds awful. I mean – I want my, I head, mean, I want my headset right now. My gosh. It's like some Google Android set. It's bad. Is it, I don't know how you do your job with that stuff. I'm gonna be honest with you. I'm on my headset right now, man. No, it's it's good to hear your voice. I I saw you on the uh, on the Amazing Race. Oh, you did? Yeah, yeah. man. Well, our, we never lost, but my wife got pregnant. We couldn't go back, and then they were supposed. They I had all the opportunity to come back with somebody else, and they denied it. Talking about the one team that won it, like said it wouldn't be fair. I'm like, are y'all kidding me? Y'all rich people, like. <laughs> Those people didn't, the people that won it didn't even need to win it. They're like multi-millionaires as it is, you know. Yeah, man. Yeah. So, no, I wanted to um, definitely call and and kind of get it get your get your take on Michigan's newest commitment, so I can include it on our on our radio show. So, uh, kind of break down for me what Michigan is getting with uh, with your latest player, Jaden uh, Jaden Smith here. Yes, I mean. I'm going to be honest with you. The whole world doesn't know the upside for this kid. Now, he could potentially be the best player that I've ever coached. And I've coached 15 kids that have played in the NFL. Um, <clears throat> what happens is you got a kid that's legit 4-5 flat. He is hand clocked 4-4 four, four times in 40-yard dashes. He just became on the scene because of his size right now. He's 6'3", 200 pounds. OK, but he runs like the wind, but that's still not his greatest attribute. His greatest attribute is his ability to bend. When this guy squats, he touches the floor. I mean, he could put over 405 to the floor and his shin bend is so great that it, it translates to rushing the passer. So you got a guy that can cover, you know, he can bump and run and run with almost anybody. And then you got a guy that can come off the edge that can scrape the ground with his shins. And that translates to a real good pass rusher. His difficulties in the past is that he was only 175, 180. This season, he ended up blowing up. He was always about six foot, six one. Now he's close to six three, 200 pounds. And people see his long hands, long arms, and they're like, oh my gosh, this guy could be 230 like easily. Mm -hmm. And then out of nowhere, 
He's a three-time all-conference player in the best conference there is in North Carolina. He'll have a chance to be a four-time all-conference. And, you know, no one's ever done that, I don't believe, in the conference that we play in. And um, you're talking about a guy that comes on the scene that's going to be electric. And the ability to go to Michigan with the network that they have and to be coached by Chris Partridge, I mean, come on, is a no-brainer. No brainer. You know, it's interesting talking to him about you, and he said, you know, you you you're instrumental in bringing the best out of him. And one of the things that he went back to is he was a receiver, he was an offensive guy, and you decided to put him on defense. What did you see to make make you say, hey man, I need you on the other side of the ball? I joke around with him all the time, um, and he'll 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 laugh about this. But when he came in as a freshman. He started as a freshman. Like I said, he was all conference his freshman year. We were not very good. And he played a little bit of receiver in seven on seven. He could go up and, and jump over people. He had all those like physical tools that, that are like it showed athleticism. But this dude had a big old jaw. Like his jaw was just he has this jaw that looks like an NFL jaw. And I knew that he was gonna grow over time. Now, time to time we put him at receiver and he could do those things. But I just knew the upside down the road of his twitchiness and his side, but he was going to outgrow receiver. And, um, and you know, that foretelling just came came to be. And uh, I'm just happy it all came came true. And this is something I don't like telling a lot of people. There was a, a group of students that went around our school um, that did a grip strength test. You know how you grab this thing and it tells your grip strength? Mm-hmm. Well, they had to do a study of 150 students. Well, me and a couple of our coaches that work out, we wanted to get on. We wanted to see what our grip strength was. And we were, like, registering, like, 138, 139. Like, we were like, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't even want to tell you what Jaden's grip strength was. It, it was – it's through the roof. We made him do it, like, 14 times because I thought the thing was messed up. <laughs> his, his grip strength – his grip strength was close to 180. And I'm talking about, like, it's hard to be five pounds, you know, per – pound per strength or whatever that thing is how it registers it's hard to be like five pounds more pressure you know to go to 145 this dude was over 175 close to 180 i was wow. like i was blown away like his grip strength is crazy i'm telling you he just needs to be in an environment where he's going to be coached hard and loved the same mm. and and chris partridge brings that factor chris partridge is like reminds you of a guy that has the skill set to coach with the best of them on defense, but he he breaks it down in such a elementary form that makes it easy that the kids can play at their fullest potential. I think that's a rare act as a coach, and I think that Chris Parcher, CP, does that. I hear him talk to guys. He makes it sound so simple, and it could be a very complex thing. Yeah, and I man. Think that's a, and that's a gift. Yeah, he man. He has that as well. Yeah, I, I felt like – when they got on Jaden and knowing that you were there, I was like, okay, well, this is going to be a guy that Michigan has a shot at because I know you're familiar with, with Chris and you're familiar with, with Jay. And so what were the, the conversations with, with Jaden like about what, like what did you tell him about the coaching staff as he got ready to sort of go on a visit and be more recruited by Michigan? What did you tell him about the kind of coaches he'd have in Ann Arbor? It was, it's got a unique situation. You know, um, Jaden has got a great supporting staff and Armand as mentor, his mother and his father. Um, you know, they don't have a lot in life, but they have a great job of getting him places and have the capability to let him see it out for himself. I'll never forget this in the fall. Um, or right when we were getting into the spring, I told him, you know, I said, Michigan's going to get in this thing. And, uh, and, all the guys around, all his friends were joking around in the gym, and they're like, oh, yeah, he's going to go to Virginia Tech. He's going to go to USC. He's going to go here. And I and I looked at him, and I said, you just don't know it yet, but you'll end up in Michigan. And they're all like, man, I ain't going up there. It's too cold. Ain't no way. Da, 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 da. All these friends were saying that. And I didn't, I didn't do nothing special. I just know that I know CP really well. I know both Harbaugh's. I know that the continuity there is so great, and the network is so great. That when he went up there, he would see it for himself. When he came back, he told me, I don't need to go on any of these official visits anymore. And I said, well, hold, hold, hold on. <laughs> I said, I said, make sure you go to at least one. You need to make sure you go 
because it's important that you feel the same way after you go to another visit. I said, don't jump too soon and feel like you made a bad decision. And then he left, you know, an official visit this past weekend. And he says, I feel exactly the same. I said, well, now you know. And uh, so we joke around a little bit about it. But I just know that, you know, Michigan's put themselves in the stamp now in the football world where they went back to back national championship playoffs, you know, and, you know, the, the playoff, it's that's a hard thing to do in today's time. They went back to back and won against, you know, Ohio State and, and they put themselves on the map that they, are, they were already, you know, a world brand. But now the continuity's finally caught up. I think the vision of Harbaugh's vision has finally gotten there. And uh, I've always believed in it from day one. I mean, I, the other guys that were getting recruited by Michigan, I, I really thought Michigan had a chance there too. But I've realized in time, I want these kids that I've coached to grow up and make their own decisions. In the past, I used to try to say, hey, I think this is best for you. But at the end of the day, I'm not going there, and I need these kids to make their own decision. And that's exactly what Jaden did. He he saw it for himself. I can anticipate and think what's going to happen. But, you know, at the end of the day, you know, Jaden made this decision himself. And I just know what Michigan's about. And I'm excited to have a guy going to play for Michigan because I believe in what they're doing. I really do. Yeah, man, I remember I remember Kravirus being recruited by Michigan hard. <laughs> Oh right. yeah, very good. Yeah, and I'll never forget. You know, I tell tell one thing to uh, you know, the head ball coach Harbaugh. Tell him I'm looking forward to seeing him this fall sometime that we can rematch that chess match, and I'll give him another opportunity because I know that 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 he's been having a hard time sleeping at night. <laughs> I love I love whooping him in chess. You know, it's the game of kings, and. uh you know, that was a nice little strike in my belt. Hey, that man, was- if you know Jim Harbaugh, you know that he really is still thinking about that. Just like, if he loses, nah, bro, yeah. he's not forgetting that. Yeah. <laughs> Tell him I love him. I respect the heck out of him, but just know who the dude is on chess, okay? Because I'm that dude. <laughs> so, listen, you, you did a great job of breaking down Jaden's game. Did, did Michigan kind of talk to you about where they envisioned him? Because Jaden was saying he could play anywhere, any linebacker position. Did they say exactly how they plan on using him? Yes, he's such a hybrid on the aspect that he can cover and he can come off the edge. That's what they're looking for, guys that can run sideline to sideline. His athleticism is what is attractable. His ability to do those things can translate to any position. Now, the next step is – the weight room, he's very strong, but, like, how much weight can he put on and how much natural vision does it work out from playing in the box or coming off the edge? That's going to translate this year. We're going to put him a little bit more in the box in the scheme that we do this year to help him out to see how he translates. And then when he gets to Michigan, he'll have that opportunity to do multiple things. And, you know, like I said, Chris Partridge does a great job of what he does. He will find the best position for him to play and utilize him. But you're getting a guy that's extremely explosive, and something you cannot teach is ability to bend. And I'm telling you, like, the one thing that just – it resolutes with me when I talk about Jaden is his ability to bend. When you watch film, the way he can twitch and duck under people, it's like he's been wrestling his whole life, mm-hmm. even though he's not a wrestler. He's a, his ability to do bend, it translates so well to rushing the passer that it's a unique talent. Gotcha, gotcha, guy. All right, so – Inquiring minds want to know, as far as Michigan fans, I mean, we're looking at the West Charlotte schedule now. What's, what are the best games to come to? Best game to come to is any conference. Oh, shoot, we, we got a lot of them. We play Independence. Uh, week three is a, is a huge game. We open the season in Memorial Stadium, one of the greatest stadiums in Charlotte. We've been asked to play in a, in a, a Turf Kings game. We play at 3 o'clock on a Saturday, and then we – we go to the old school independence game. They're playing at our stadium. And then some of the big ones down the road is we go against Chambers, who's been a tyrant in, um, in you know, they've won in the last four years, they've won two state championships. We play them uh, later in the season. So we got we got a lot of games. We Like I said, we play in the hardest conference there is in the state. And we're only a 3A team playing in a 4A conference. Mm. So... We love it. We love the competition, and, you know, iron sharpens iron. But there's multiple. You can pick four or five games that will be a great game to come to. Gotcha. All right, Sam, you're going to see me in the fall, man. I'm looking forward to it. Yeah, I'm definitely going to come to the uh, Ohio State-Michigan game. That's a bucket list. I already got my 
tickets planned out to, to fly down and things like that. So I'll definitely see you soon. All right, my man. I appreciate you, my guy. No, I appreciate you. All right, Bye -bye. talk to you. So, guys, you heard Sam Griner there rave about this dude's athleticism, and he talked about his ability to bend, to be a guy that's 6'3", 6'4", and some change, or 6'3", and some change, 6'4", uh, you know, explosive quickness, 4'5", 40, but he said, you know, he can bend so well that his shins scrape the ground. Just that he, he is that he's a fluid athlete. A lot of guys are angular. A lot of guys that long, they, they, they're straight up and down, they they change of direction is tough for him for them that's not this kid and one of the things that stood out to me he said uh you know talking uh going back to the conversation before we went to the break and we were talking about jordan ship so jordan he comes on the official visit to michigan but before that he and channing competed against west charlotte in a in a seven on seven he said man they had they had this dude covering chan covering channing and he said this dude was also in the fastest man contest at the whole thing and finished second to some, I think some running back there or some some running back or receiver. He finished second as a linebacker in the fastest man contest there. So you're talking about a dude who's upside. And I, if you don't trust my word, trust Sam's. Uh, the other Sam, <laughs> right? Sam Griner, who's coached these 15 pros and is looking at this dude and is saying he just needs weight. Just like we were talking about with Devin Baxter. Just like we were talking about with Elias Rudolph, this is another guy you give him to Ben Herbert, put him in the incubator, and let's see what happens, right? I, I like that position, and clearly Steve, Chris Partridge, and, and, and crew, Jay Harbaugh, all those guys really close with, with Sam Griner, they feel the same way about him. Yep. So last last segment, we were talking. you were talking about Aaron Childs, and you know Michigan's got to keep the irons warm at good counsel, you know, because good counsel is going to keep producing power five D one. Matter of fact, I think one of the 25s at defensive back is a kid that Michigan at good counsel. I can't remember his name, but a kid that Michigan already is really high on. Uh, Michigan has had such a good relationship with Sam Griner since the Quavaris Crouch mm -hmm. recruitment. If you guys remember, Quavaris Crouch committed to Tennessee over Michigan, transferred to Michigan State. I, I believe he's still there. No, I think uh, he I left. Remember, but did he leave? Okay, mm -hmm. yeah. Um, but – this is why you maintain good relationships uh, with coaching staffs or even individual coaches. Because I believe West Charlotte is not where <laughs> Boris Crouch played, I believe, right? No, no, he's not. He's at a different – so Griner's at a different school. Uh, but you want to maintain as many good relationships as you can for situations just like this. Because I guarantee Sam Griner went to bat for Michigan in this one, uh, knowing – the type of coaches and producers that uh, guys like Jay Harbaugh and Chris Partridge are, and just good recruiters, good guys like that, that, you know, they lend themselves well to these types of recruits. And, and uh, yeah, Jaden Smith, another, yeah, really, really high ceiling kid. Uh, yeah. A guy I know in Michigan offered, I think they were like the fifth or sixth or seventh offer um, a kid that you, one of those, you turn it on and you're like, how does this kid only have a big city? <laughs> Like Charlotte, North Carolina, how does this kid not have 15, 20, 25 offers, right? Um, so you get in early, you have a great relationship with the head coach. You know, I mean, it's just, it's it's turning over every rock, you know, in situations like this where it can really, really pay off because I know he's got some weight to gain, but again, he's not, to me, he's not an 87 or 88. I mean, this kid athletically is is a four-star type prospect for sure. Interested to see if he gets in front of some analysts, some more analysts and stuff. But between now and uh, when his senior season's over, but I, I, I know Michigan doesn't care. Right. Um, they'll take him. You know, right. Yeah. They'll take him and not give uh, a crap about uh, where he's ranked or rated. At right. the end of the day, I almost did it again. Right. Um, you know, but either yeah. So yeah, nice a nice win for Michigan and really another another low stress sort of win. I mean, it was. Once he got, I think Michigan felt good going into his visit, uh, and uh, we're able to seal the deal immediately after. So, yeah, I think uh, you one of the things that to that you uh, highlighted in talking about his ranking, you know, he's 198 pounds, and I think one of the reasons why his his profile or his his ranking is down is because they rank him, they consider him to be likely a safety, and he said. I asked him about that. He said, I don't know why I've never played safety in my life. He said, people look at me and they see a safety. 
but say I'm a linebacker and I'm going to be a linebacker and I'm going to build my body up into linebacker size. So if he can do that and maintain his speed, man, he's going to be one of those guys that we're talking about. Just like you said last time, Steve, when we were talking about who are going to be the sleepers in, in, in this class, Jade Smith is way up there as a potential guy. But let's come back around, Bryce, to another conversation. So, you know, spots, how many – positions how many num what the numbers you allocate for a certain position it can be a fluid thing you can start out saying i'm gonna take four edge guys and i'm gonna take you know five offensive linemen and depending on how things shake you might wind up taking extra offensive linemen and taking away from another position uh you know using using i don't know maybe you had some some bonus some bonus uh spots that you were going to allocate for a defensive line as maybe tweener guys. And you're going to say down the line, well, maybe there's an offensive lineman or two that I'm feeling really good about that might change things. And I feel like Michigan might be in that, that exact position right now with a couple of prospects that made the campus recently. Yeah. I, it's just, it's good recruiting. It's a good problem to have, you know, and they had this past weekend, Michael um, Uini come up. He's a top 247 offensive tackle from the state of Texas. Might sound familiar because the weekend prior, they had Ben and Warren, who's a top 247 offensive tackle from the state of Texas. And I put in a crystal ball for Ben and Warren. I think, I don't know if we all did. I think, I Steve, I Steve, did. did you put in one? Yeah, Steve put in. I haven't yeah. put in one yet. So I know Texas A&M is heavily in the mix there. A couple other schools. And we'll much. Big Mike, you know, the thing with him, and I was going to put in a crystal ball, I actually didn't because Clemson's still very much in the mix, but he's got an official visit to Alabama at the end of October. So I don't think he's close to a decision. And even so, you know, I just, it's Alabama. You never know when you they take those official visits, but mm -hmm. I feel confident to say today, that Michigan leaves for both guys, which means, Sam, I'm not the greatest at math, but they got five. They lead for two. That's seven. It's like, do you take them, though? That That's my question. You know, and if I was controlling and how they operate the offense with Jim Harbaugh, I would take them both. Mm -hmm. Now, we talked about this again off the podcast, but you take seven, you're going to lose something either in the class or on the roster, because you just can't have 50 offensive linemen on your roster. That's just, it, it doesn't work. You know, it doesn't work like that. So I think that's a position, though, if you're going to have an overstock, that's one area I would always have more than less. Because offensive linemen, every play, what are you doing? You're hitting each other. You're pounding each other. So guys are going to wear down. They're going to get hurt. You need those extra bodies. You know, you saw that this past season. A guy like uh, Giovanni Alhadi, he became essential for the past season because he had guys going down left and right for games, and he filled in, and you didn't even know the offensive line, you know, had a guy back up. And so we'll see what happens. But I think right now today it's a real possibility they could end this class with seven offensive linemen. And if that's the case, it's going to take away from other positions yeah. because – it's just a number game. And that's why I know Steve's favorite question that people always ask him is how many are they going to take in the class? Well, same thing. How many are they going to take at this position? They don't even know half the time <laughs> because there's a chance that, let's say, they only have five offense linemen, you know? And then who's to say that Manuel Beagle? And I'm not saying they're recruiting him right. on defensive line, but he could easily play offense line. He's got Georgia, he's got Texas A&M, and Penn State who all offer him for offensive line. Yeah. This so, this would this would be the dilemma, Steve, if you want to call it that. You know, they have a really, really good offensive line haul already. With with the, these five guys could very easily, each of them wind up being a multi-year starter at the University of Michigan. So they are really, really good. The two guys that are on the board, just as pure athletes, just talk about as pure athletes, they could be the best two pure athletes in the bunch if Michigan were to land them. So do you can you afford to turn that down? You know what I mean? I think that's the position that Michigan will find itself in. I so I think I think one thing 
if they take if they do somehow end up with seven, you have to believe that the five that are currently committed signed off. Yeah. Right, because not only not only are all five of these guys very talented, but they've all been putting so much effort into helping build the class, mm-hmm. and like they they've all been super super. Pa- and I understand you want to stack as much talent as you possibly can, but these guys, like you said, Sam, are all already very talented. All five guys they have committed. I just got to think they'd all be on board with them taking seven guys if if Michigan had the opportunity, right? So. Yeah, you you have to take both of these guys. I think if you can get both of them, you know, and, and so it's a big debate on the board for a long time about could they take seven. I was always very pessimistic just because it, it's hard to get seven. Guys. <laughs> it's hard to get convince seven guys right. to commit and sign. At, at you know, not especially like you said, you're talking Andrew Sprague, top 100 level guy, Leaney, top 100 level guy, Bennett Warren, top 100. You know, they're rec- recruiting like very high level talent. It's it's hard to, you know, it's like when Bama would sign like three top 100 running backs, you know, like you know, it just doesn't happen. Uh, so, and now we talk about Aaron Childs, we talk about Darian Mayo, like these are spots that we thought were maybe going to be allocated elsewhere as well, right? And and does it feels like Michigan is going to take a bigger class than they've taken the last couple cycles for sure? But there still is like a limit at the end of the day. Mm-hmm. You can't take. They're not going to sign forty guys. <laughs> so, right? I mean, so I, so you know, yeah. But if if you're, I I agree with Bryce with the one the one. If there is a position you want to stack, it's got to be up front, right? I mean, we've seen how valuable elite play on the offensive line and depth is can really really drive. I mean, look at how much they're building on both sides of the line. Yeah. Honestly, if we if we put if we combine edge and their D linemen. You're talking like between the two positions, it could be 13 guys, 14 guys between yeah. edge, D line, and an offensive line. I mean, I think they understand. Michigan understands. I mean, the trenches are where championships are won, and and you can strike. I also feel like on the offensive line, strike while the iron is hot. Right? You have two Joe Moore awards in a row. You're producing guys at the next level on the offensive line. Like, if there's a time to capitalize it would be this cycle right now, right? Mm-hmm. So interesting. Yeah, it, when we say the, the Marlowe thing, it's good. Pro- one of those good things. <laughs> hey, for uh, folks who didn't watch The Wire, that's a great reference, right? Yeah, <laughs> like yeah, talking about one of those good, good problems, problems, right? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, man. So listen, I think you guys are all over it with the trend with both guys. But my reluctance of the crystal ball has everything to do with what you just said, Steve. It's hard to get seven guys. If you get the sixth guy with the seventh, really still come. Uh, Bennett Warren has basically had Michigan out front since he visited the first time, right? Mike Uweenie had a graphic, a Michigan commit graphic months ago, right? I mean, I, he had it up for like five minutes before he took it down. I think Michigan's been looking really good with both of these guys for a while, but when the, when the sixth guy commits – with a seventh guy still be like, I really want to do that. I just and who would who would be the sixth guy? Right. That's look at the Max. Remember Max Anderson was a guy that Michigan absolutely led for. But I think when they even got to five, things cooled down there like immediately. And he just committed to Tennessee the like yesterday mm-hmm. or the other day, mm-hmm. right? And then it got in like, yeah, like and it and again. Not a negative for Michigan. They're they're going to get definitely going to get five, and they're probably going to get six. But other staffs are going to be in that set sixth and seventh guy's ear, saying, "Do you want to wait three years mm-hmm. to play there? And even if they're more talented, they may not have to wait three years. But that's what they're going to tell them. You know, like you're going to sit in the in the on the bench for three years there. You know, you could play for us year two guaranteed, maybe even year one if you, you know, if you're as good as we think you are. So. Yeah. I tell you what, it'd be the best recruiting job I think of the cycle. <laughs> like I know they're in on a lot of big, big guys, big names. You know they they could get Aaron Scott still. Um, there's other guys, but like to get seven, like top target offensive linemen uh, would be just massive. I mean, you can't understate how how huge that would be for for now and the future. No doubt, no doubt. All right, so let's reframe the week heading into the weekend as far as visits are concerned. We talked about Mayo being off the visit list. Talked about Childs obviously being off the visit list. Still some big-time visitors that 
uh, on their way to campus and, or that have already made their way to campus. So they had seven on seven. And, of course, Bryce Underwood, Jeremiah Beasley, Belleville on campus, right? Um, you also had coming up, and this is one that I know Steve's been talking about for a while, uh, but Christopher Burgess from Chicago Simeon made his way to campus today, today being Thursday when we record this. That's a guy, have you guys looked at his, the offers he racked up over the last couple of months? I mean, man, this dude. Has had a great two months, Bryce. I, I mean, Bama, Georgia, Ohio State was the most recent to come to the fold. I mean, they have just been lining up one after the other for, for Chris Burgess. Absolutely. And this is a kid they're very familiar with. You know, he was on campus. He actually camped at Michigan last summer. He won uh, MVP honors, so they know exactly who he is. He comes from the same school as Chris Bryant, who's still, I think, currently on staff mm -hmm. helping with a bunch of things there in the program and yeah i mean with all the connections they got in illinois you kind of would assume you already had the offer by now but i was kind of surprised think, <laughs> yeah regardless <laughs> this is a kid that i think i mean you could see how talented he is and on top of that he's his offer list i mean is impressive to say the least so i don't know i it's one of those offers I kind of shocked he didn't even have coming in. I, I forgot who posted on the board. It was like, I think he might get offers this visit. I had that a, was, yeah, I posted double that. Double check. Yeah, double <laughs> check. I was like, what do you mean he's, he might be shocked if he gets an offer? I was like, oh, wow, he doesn't even have an offer yet. But, yeah, I, I think they got a great shot of him, and we'll see what happens from, from there. So. Yeah, you know, same school as, as uh, Chris Bryant, same trainer. I don't know. It probably won't matter in the grand scheme. He's the same trainer as uh, Justin Scott. Uh, as well uh, so you know he's getting some uh, he's getting worked up physically pretty well down there in the shy so it's good to get him on campus and then a couple of Floridians one of which is committed right Bryce uh, making this uh, making their way up here to campus yeah Chris Ewald he's a top 100 cornerback from South Florida he's been committed for Michigan for I think since December Steve Cleanscale has been his recruit through and through, and he's done a really good job. He's already the second come in that class with Montrez Walker. He's been helping to build the 2025 class in Michigan. But before that happens, he's been working on one of his teammates, Sam, in 2024, top 247. Is he a safety? I think I want to say safety. I know online 247, I always see people comment. They say, are you a linebacker? Are you a safety? No, I, I think he's a safety. But Saquon Patterson – He's been up to campus a couple times, the Penn State game. He was up, I think, earlier in the spring. He's back this weekend. I wasn't sure if it was official, unofficial. Steve confirmed it's unofficial, which I think is even more um, noteworthy because that means he's coming up on his own dime. Mm -hmm. So, And this is a recruitment that I give credit to Steve on this where I didn't think they were in a game much traction. It was one of those I just kind of, I don't say blew off, but I just – didn't think much of it at the time. And lo and behold, you see some of the guys I thought they were standing well for, like Ricardo Jones and Georgia. I thought they had a really good shot for him for a while, and he kind of faded away. Some other kids. And now you got Saquon Patterson right there on campus once again with one of your best recruiters in Jay Harbaugh who knows how to get the job done. I really like now Michigan standing in this recruitment, and we'll see where things stand coming out of this weekend. Yeah, Zaquan Patterson, uh, Steve, first of all, safety all the way for Michigan. That, and that I think that's one of the things that kind of has them standing out. You got some schools that have been telling him he's a, you know, he's a linebacker. Michigan, so sold on him being a safety, Steve, they've even telling him that he could play some corner. Uh, at times, they're they're willing to put him out on the island. They believe in his his coverage ability that much. You know how they like those those longer guys, those bigger, longer guys, and give them a shot to be out on an island. Uh, they would do that with Zaquan Patterson, really resonating with him. And you got to tip your cap again. Talk about having a chance where no one thinks you have one between uh, Clink and, of course, your safeties coach Jay Harbaugh. Who we whatever position you put Jay Harbaugh at, he recruits the hell out of it, and he's doing the same thing here. 
Yeah, so <clears throat> the Patterson stuff started with the linebacker stuff because I think we, like, our analysts switched him to linebacker on the site after what, I don't know if it was a seven on seven, and then he was not happy, happy about that <laughs> at all. Uh, you know, and yeah, smart of Michigan to, because I've watched him, and I've seen some clips of him in one on one coverage, and I, I kind of, be honest, kind of wondered where the linebacker stuff was sort of coming from what is i mean what's he listed at six six foot 185 i mean i just uh not linebacker <laughs> you know not a guy would that that size alone is not linebacker size is he so. six foot though i thought he was longer it says, than that. It says, i mean i'm just going off what he's okay. on 24 7 we have him at six foot 185 uh but yeah this was one i don't remember if it was after the penn state game he was up one more one time before that also wasn't he bryce he might have been. I'm not sure. Way, I know for way. a fact. Yeah. I know it was after one of the – like, I think Michigan was convinced he was going to stay down south. And so I don't know if the – I think a combination of persistence and maybe that strong defensive backs pitch as a safety corner combo uh, has them yeah, right in this one. Mm-hmm. I think I posted this morning. I think it's Michigan and Miami right now. I think Florida State, Ohio State, and – uh I'm not even sure who else he's considering uh, are trailing right now. And, and he's on campus for an unofficial visit. Right. So, I mean, got to think it's not as if Michigan standing is going to falter after hosting him for an entire weekend, uh, especially if uh, isn't uh, Woodson on camp. You know, you always wonder a defensive, any defensive back on campus, if they try to, um, you know, make that happen somehow. Well, so, so Charles is it's just so before any Buckeyes start getting any ideas coming in the chat, that kind of thing. Charles is a uh, fundraiser for the Charles Woodson uh, Clinical Research uh, Fund. It, the fundraising events for that are this week in Ann Arbor. So you have the event on Main, which is downtown Ann Arbor, a restaurant. It's like a street party where everyone in Ann Arbor goes out and... And they raise a lot of money. They eat a lot of good food. It's like a, a party. So if you're down on Main Street, you're not meeting with Charles Woodson if you happen to walk. But everyone's walking by, Char- by Charles Woodson on Main Street Thursday night. And then he has his golf outing on, on Friday uh, as well. So, I mean, if you're, if you're going to have some guys up in the summer and you're University of Michigan, this is a weekend you want to have some guys up because – you don't have to arrange for a meeting. To, you don't have to arrange for a bump. That could just happen by chance, literally by chance. It, it damn sure I would be making sure. I'd be making sure the chances are really good if it were me. It is totally legal, right? So there you go. So, so yeah. So he's up on campus, and then should we go over the other two? The other. Absolutely. Yeah, so we got uh, it's we got some official visitors uh, led off by Gatlin Bear, but lay, lay them all out. Yep. So yeah. So Gatlin Bear, the Idaho top 100. Uh, last we know, he's he is going to do his mission, right? So we're mm-hmm. treating him as a 2026 for mm-hmm. all intents and purposes. Uh, would probably be like the number two player in the country for. Tw- I mean, he he'd be a top. He's already a top 50 kid with the chance to rise up even further. Uh, move him down two classes, and you're talking. He's not going to lose his speed, right? It's different than Andrew Gentry only being able to work out for. 15 minutes a day. I don't think you forget how to be fast. Uh, you know, if you're a kid like Gallon Bear, so uh, on the mission, right? They're only allowed to work out a certain amount. I think that's what Gentry had said. He's only was only allowed to work out for like 15 or 20 minutes a day or something. But either way, Michigan well in that one with Nebraska. Um, what TCU, Boise State, Oregon, I think he took. Yep, yep, Boise State. So a very interesting mix of schools. But again, talk about. Is a coach Anderson uh-huh. in Idaho? His coach, the same coach, uh, that guy that coached Colson Loveland. Uh, you know, another reason you keep those relationships strong. And then, yeah, if a couple four-star corners in Jameer Grimsley out of Tampa, Michigan definitely trailing there. I think, I think we think Alabama probably out in front there. And then Terry on Nichols out of Cincinnati. Cincinnati and area Michigan's done really well uh-huh. the last two cycles under with Steve Plink scale. Uh, Penn State. Hit uh, Notre Dame, Ohio State did offer. Not sure where that's at, but but a guy that Michigan probably top two or three for, and and 
is right up there with Bear as one of the more important official visitors, in my opinion. Yeah, no doubt. Uh, we certainly will be bringing you details, and we hope to – we're working on it. I think we're going to get uh, – Chris Ewald and Zaquan Patterson in studio. We'll see. We'll keep you posted on that. Keep an eye on the board for that, right? And we do uh, – so news, there was some talk that Bryce West was going to maybe maybe make it back up uh, Thursday, uh, today when we were recording, and we got word that, that was not going to happen. So Ball is definitely in Ohio State's court to see if they can close there. Aaron Scott. So I spoke to Aaron for a long while uh, about his Michigan visit, and we have – we have a lot of content coming from that over on the MichiganInsider.com um, talking about what stood out about his Michigan visit. I think I'm going to hold that until after Ohio State, that part of it, about what stood out about his his Michigan visit. But the part about his timeline, I really want you to pay. I'm interested in what you guys think when you read the part about his timeline for making a decision because he went into his thought process there. And I'm curious what you guys think is signals. Do you think his timeline, what he says about his signals, Michigan or Ohio State? Because I tell you what, I, my read on it, listening to it live, going back over it, listening to it again, and asking some follow-up questions, I think Michigan, I think they reinforced their lead coming out of that visit. Now, he has the Ohio State visit to turn it all around. But I, I thought Michigan was leading heading into that visit, and I think they strengthened that lead uh, while he was here. So, but be on the lookout. We got a lot coming over on the MichiganInsider.com. That Aaron Scott piece, I'll put a poll up on the board to see what you think. want you to chime in there. I got a chance to talk to, uh, to uh, Donovan Edwards about his Ohio State story, and he finally opened up about what really went down with Ohio State. What happened? Ohio State was leading for Donovan Edwards. Make no mistake, we were very clear about that on the site, right? We were telling people Ohio State's out front, and it turned like that. And I told people why. And Ohio State fans like, he, you're making stuff up. That didn't really happen. I didn't make it up. Donovan spills the beans on exactly what happened, so you can check that out over on the MichiganInsider.com coming up as well. A lot still to come. And just in time, for those of you who aren't members, that 50% off deal, Going on still, if you're a monthly subscriber and you've been waiting for a good deal to come along, well, this is your opportunity because it is also available for monthly subscribers to upgrade to an annual subscription for 50% off. You cannot beat the bang for your buck when it comes to being an annual subscriber over on the MichiganInsider.com. So that's the best way to show love. Of course, if you like the podcast and like listening to us there, Rate the podcast. Be sure to review it. Tell all your friends about it. They can get it wherever they find their podcasts. It's Google, Stitcher, Spotify, iTunes, you name it. Of course, if you're watching us on YouTube, keep doing so. Like the video. Subscribe to the channel. That way, every time we do a new video, you get a, a notification letting you know. And by the way, oh, newsflash. I didn't even tell the fellas this. So the 7 on 7 next week. And Sound Mind, Sound Body, 7 on 7. You're going to have uh, Jeremiah Beasley is going to commit there. Well... Those guys are coming on the radio uh, to promote that event Monday morning. And we're going to go live that morning because they're lining up a slate. And we're actually going to go live here on the Michigan Insider YouTube channel. I'm going to put it on the Facebook page because they're lining up a list of guys that are going to come on live that morning to talk about whatever we want to talk about. Certainly competing, but also their recruitment. So Nick Marsh lined up. I know that's not relevant to Michigan, but might he go to state? Might you have to see him? Nick Marsh going to be on there. Isaiah Marshall, Xavier Newsom, Jeremiah Beasley coming off his uh, recent visit. He's going to be on there. Jacob Oden going to be on. Brandon Davis, uh, Brandon Davis Swain going to be on. Bryce Underwood going to be on. Uh, C.J. Sadler going to be on. I mean, this is a load. It's like we got everybody coming on this deal here. So um, we'll keep you posted. It's going to be live. We're going to bring all that content to you over on the MichiganInsider.com as well. So I'll be sure to put a, uh, you know, put a live feed up so you can have that reminder to know that Monday morning we will have this. A hi to the boop. It's hi to boop, right? <laughs> boop the cat. Couldn't, couldn't wait. We had to come out of the hour and tenth minute here. <laughs> so 
a lot to come over on MichiganInsider.com, folks. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time on the next edition of the Michigan Recruiting Insider.